Once again, this is The Way to a Wonderful Life. The Way to a Wonderful Life is broadcast right here on WKDI AM 840 on your radio dial Monday through Friday at 1030 AM Eastern Time, coming to you live from Palm Springs, California, and simulcast on the Internet at WKDI AM 840.com at 1030 AM Eastern Time, 930 Central Time, 730 Pacific Time, and then rebroadcast in the evening at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 9.30 p.m. East, or Central Time, and 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and then once again in the wee hours of the following morning. So this morning, our Way to a Wonderful Life message is titled, Opening to the Infinite. Opening to the Infinite. And I have some words here from the wonderful Albert Einstein. He tells us there are only two ways to live your life. One is though nothing is a miracle. There are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. The other is though everything is a miracle. And so when we start thinking about our relationship to the infinite, we realize that that's exactly what we want to think about. We want to think about everything. Miracles are normal and natural to those who believe. Miracles are normal and natural to those who believe. And as we get more excited about life, and we realize that enthusiasm is the yeast that makes our hopes rise to the stars, as the great Henry Ford said. We know that everything that we desire that's of the good is coming to us, to our awareness from the infinite, from God. So the world is before you, and you need not take it or leave it as it was when you came in. The world is before you. And you need not take it or leave it as it was when you came in. And this means for everything that we do, whether this is our home, our workplace, our family, whatever it is, we want to add that greater something to our life experience, that greater something to our life experience. But just imagine ourselves realizing something more, something that just brings us a greater interest in life, a greater enthusiasm for life, and a greater joy in life. Dr. Frank Richelieu in his book, The Art of Being Yourself, which you can buy on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. That's The Art of Being Yourself by Dr. Frank Richelieu, which is a book I highly, highly, highly recommend. He writes, Your conscious mind is the doorway to your creative center. We live in a world where there is much negativity And we must let the conscious mind stand guard at the door where thoughts of every nature seek entry. It should be selective. It should evaluate that which it takes into itself. Our subconscious mind looks for the conscious mind to give it impressions and directions. We are always impressing the subjective side of our being, that is the soul side of our being. When you hear, see, or touch, It is your conscious mind that is seeing, hearing, and touching. It is your conscious mind which analyzes. It is your conscious mind which makes the selection. Your conscious mind does not select. Subconscious mind, I'm sorry. Your subconscious mind does not select. It acts upon the impressions given it. In other words, whenever we consciously think about something and believe it to be true, whether it's true or not, we give that impression to our subconscious mind and even though it may not be true the subconscious mind which is the seat of the soul will validate that in our experience that's why jesus tells us it's done unto us as we believe because as we believe we make those impressions upon our soul side of life our subjective subconscious life and that part of life validates our experiences for us automatically What you ask of your subconscious mind, it will do for you. If you need it to gather together and reveal data to you, it will do so. For whatever you need is in this subjective storehouse. It will do what you request, but it will not volunteer its services. You might think of your conscious mind as a swinging door, which opens in two directions, Dr. Frank tells us. It swings open to the outer world and swings into your inner world, permitting both input and output. Many thoughts slip through without being consciously chosen. They are like children who romp into the house with dirty feet before their parents are aware of what they are doing. 
This is why the conscious mind needs the sand guard at the swinging door. We must be aware of what we are letting in and what we are calling for. For when we give the subconscious mind the right impressions, we experience the right expression. The subconscious mind is intelligent. It performs perfectly if it is not given cross-purpose directions. In other words, confusion. For example, it knows how to regulate the body. It knows how to properly circulate, assimilate, and eliminate. We do not have to know these things consciously. It can fulfill any creative activity we choose. If we are wounded, it knows how to mend the wound. It knows how to coagulate the blood, so if you are cut, you will not bleed to death. It knows how to breathe in and out. All of these and many more things the subconscious does automatically. That's that intelligence of God within us, that incarnation of God's intelligence and power and spirit within us. However, there are other things that can only be acted upon by the subconscious if it is given some sort of impression or direction. The conscious mind must come into play when we wish to change our habit pattern. In the case of both actions and mental emotional responses, the subconscious part of us is subjective or subservient to a higher command, the command of our conscious thought. The conscious mind blazes trails. The subconscious is there to stand under and support what the conscious mind does. The moment fear, or the moment, the moment fear or anything unlike the spirit enters into our mind, it stops us. Sometimes we don't, we don't experience the things that we fear, but we are stopped from exploring and identifying and becoming aware of the things that are wonderful, the things that our faith can direct us to and guide us to that will give us some amazing, wonderful experiences because fear has blocked us. Fear has blocked the, the path of the flow of the spirit within us. We know and we can accept that I am I, that there's no, that I am within all of us, that no one can say for us and no one can, no one can take control of our life because they can't say I am. They can't say I am anything for us. They can say you are, he is, she is, they are, but they can't say I am and I am is that power of God within us to take the liberty to choose, to have the liberty to choose and direct our mind and direct our thoughts and direct our experiences in the direction that we want. As we stand guard at the door of our thought, today do not feel you have to suppress anything to keep it from manifesting. Suppression and repression are a holding back. And like steam in the kettle, that which is suppressed or repressed will push its way out. Am I saying that if you are angry with someone, you should lash out? No. But do not grit your teeth and let the anger go underground either. Sit down quietly and ask yourself why you are angry at that person. Get to the heart of the matter. Are you acting immaturely? Are you reacting to old thoughts and feelings? Have you simply failed to stand guard at the gate of your thought? You can usually find the reason and clear it out of your consciousness without resorting to action you may later regret. Take the thought today as as to what you entertain in your conscious mind or it will be subconsciously acted upon. It will be subconsciously acted, acted upon. Spirit is everywhere and you are an embodiment of it. Closer to us than breathing, nearer than hands and feet, the poet tells us. But when we start thinking about all these unseen things that are power, that are spirit, that are energy, that are a lot part of intelligence, we realize that the spirit is a great unseen, the great invisible, just as gravity is invisible. And so we know and we understand that that which is invisible, that which is invisible, brings forth the visible, because everything has been brought forth from the invisible. Everything, everything. Even the clothes that we have on our back were an idea in mind before they became what they are today before they became the shirts or the blouses or the pants or the shorts or whatever it is that we're wearing, the suits. Those were ideas in the mind and the unseen side of life before they became into form. So spirit is everywhere and we are an embodiment of it. And as we begin to realize the rich dimensions of ourselves that can unfold, then we begin to realize just how 
great the potential is within us. We are never without a light to guide us, and this light is within us. We are the light of our world, just as Jesus said we were. And as we turn within, become aware of the light within our own consciousness, and let this light reflect out into our world, we will see good and more good. Good and more good show up in our lives. We were not put here to grope around in darkness. Groping, suffering, and darkness are created by negative imaginations. Life is love, and we are here to express the love and light that are within us. When we realize this truth, our daily life will take on a whole new dimension of livingness. We have many choices, choices open to us. We can choose a corner, and we can sit in the corner and do nothing. We can search far a field for a sense of identity and purpose or we can realize what we are and begin to express it. Within us is a continuous flow of creativity. It was not intended that we be ongoingly static or idle. We were not created that way. Every part and particle of us is active. Every atom within us is dancing the dance of life, though to the outer eye at any particular moment we may appear anything but active. Ideas are always flowing within us. Wholeness is always present. Abundance is always at hand. But until we become aware of this and act upon it, it does not manifest in our life. It does not manifest in our life. So think about those words. Think about those words. We're one with, with all the good in the universe. Everything, everything that we can imagine for ourselves and more is available if we just let ourselves conceive ourselves personally as experiencing it and be realistic in our thoughts be realistic in what it is that we want to accomplish what it is that we want to do what it is that we want to be and start drawing into our mind the ideas that get us closer to that as our reality get us closer to that as the thing that we are the thing that we are to experience All life lies within us and before us, but we must do the taking for ourselves. The spiritual kingdom is here on earth. It already exists in its completeness, but we must recognize that and partake of it. If our life seems a total void today, we need to make the choice for it to be otherwise, determining that we will experience all the joy of living and the fulfillment that life has to offer. That's why Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand. And the kingdom of God is within you, not low here or low there. It's all in the way we think in life. It's all in the spirit in which we live our life and the attitudes that we have towards things. So let's stop trying to change the world out there. Stop trying to change the people out there. Stop fighting situations and circumstances and get to the center of our being and find the reality of life itself. Every cell we have within us is part of a divine design it does not come into being by accident. Every cell bursts with the allness and the fullness of life. Individual cells change, but the life process goes on. Life is a continuous process, a process with many changes. If we tried to hold on to old cells which had served their purpose, new ones would never have a chance. The same is true when we cling to that in our experience that should be released. The newness awaits us, but we must let go of the old and make room for that newness. We must not be afraid to let the past go. We can be assured that if we let it go, something more desirable will emerge. Something more desirable will emerge. For life is a continuous process of betterment and carries us into higher and higher dimensions of awareness if we just open our mind to the infinite, open our mind to the infinite. There are cycles within cycles within cycles in the unfoldment of life. But the people who insist on remaining right where they are do not realize that they are the cause of their own suffering. They refuse to change and unfold. I am not denying that change can be painful, but the pain will be nominal if we change willingly and do not become set and fixed in our old ways of thinking. Anything is easier if we can if we can just flow with it instead of fighting and resisting it. But so many times people just get into the drama. 
it is the drama. We must, we must learn to not sweat the small stuff and just re realize that it's all small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. Somebody said that. I can't remember the name of the person who wrote that book. But it's the very truth. It's the very truth. It's just as true as Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, if you can, if you think you can. We must get our mind around the things that we want to do, our mind around the things that we want to have, our mind around the things that we want to be, and start seeing ourselves in that image likeness of being that, having it, and doing it. Start drawing into our mind the power, the power and the intelligence and the spirit of the infinite, open to the infinite good, open to the infinite love, open to the infinite joy. That's why Jesus said, look up and not down. Elevate your head to look up. Elevate your eyes to look up. Look above the material and the physical. He didn't say look up to a heaven, but look above the material and the physical and start realizing that that infinite presence, that unseen, invisible power and intelligence and spirit is available right where we are. Let's draw it into our mind, our heart, and our soul and say, there is something for me that's greater than I've experienced before, and there's that something greater that I shall do than I've done before, and I'm being guided and directed to that something greater right now, right where I am, right now, right where I am. And start believing that this is so and start believing that we're being guided and directed by the Spirit to realize the greater thing, the greater thing. Now, when fear steps in, our faith may be limited. When negation takes over, we cannot see the truth. Anxiety is failure to remember that we are greater than any situation or any condition, and we are greater, much greater than we know, than we know, than even we know ourselves. We must work with ourselves in consciousness. We do not have to grope and fumble, fumble through life. To know that we are one with divine power is not egotistical. It is to know the truth about ourselves that life, power, and consciousness are within us. The higher self within you and me has the power to rule over all worldly elements in our life. It has the power to rule over fears, conditions, situations, and it has the power to direct our life in ways of peace and plenty and beauty. Just amazing words. Now, this is all coming from Dr. Frank Richelieu's book. Not all of it, but most of it. <laughs> I sure better say I... There's my, my own personal words in there, too. I am not lacking in my faith in what Dr. Frank is telling us, that's for certain. Dr. Frank Richelieu is R-I-C-H-E-L-I-E-U. Richelieu, The Art of Being Yourself is the book. You can buy it on barnesandnoble.com or amazon.com. It's one of those books that you can just hold it in your hands and open it up, and wherever you start reading, you will find something, something, because your mind is guiding you to it, that something that will inspire you and motivate you to have a greater faith, a greater feeling of hope, and a greater feeling that you can open your mind to the infinite and let that flow of new ideas and greater intelligence and spirit move through you. What a wonderful feeling we will experience when we realize that all we must really develop is consciousness and that within our own consciousness, we are the king or the queen, we are the ruler, we are the governor, we are the director, and we are the producer of our life. This knowledge gives us a great sense of freedom and power to be and to do what we really are. So why don't we experience what we truly are? I believe it is because we look outward instead of inward. We look out there instead of looking inward into our own mind, our own spirit. We focus on the false instead of the true. As long as we see falsely and accept illusion for truth, we will continue to experience less than our complete good. Have we ever felt snubbed? Didn't, didn't you feel hurt about it? Have you ever had the feeling that no one understood you? We can be sure that the individual who says he or she is never hurt is the one who is hurting the most. He or she just does not admit it. It's too prideful to say they are. All of us have hurt feelings at one time or another, but we need to know that it is the pride and the ego that are hurting. It is not our real self. What we must do is work on ourselves in consciousness. We suffer more from our own attitudes than from the false opinions of others. 
we suffer because we expect people to act in a certain way and to respond in a certain way, and then we become disappointed. Who disappointed us? Not really the other person, but our own expectation of what the other person should do or be, of what the other person should do or be. We have people who heard people say, my children have disappointed me. My best friend has let me down. I have been hurt by my closest relatives. I, the people I do the most for do the least for me. When I need my friends, where are they? Now, isn't that pitiful? That's pitiful. We must look within ourselves to see what triggers these hurt feelings. Of course, we all have the right to let ourselves be hurt if we want to. We have the right to decide what others should do and then be disappointed. We have the right to make such choices, but is it worth it to do these things to ourselves? I don't think so. Not only do we sometimes expect too much from others, but we also expect too much of ourselves. We overextend ourselves. We try too hard to change ourselves or to make ourselves accomplish more and more. That does not mean we should not try to improve ourselves, but sometimes... We try to do it all in one big leap when it should be more of an unfolding process. Expect and demand the best from life, but do not demand of yourself that you accomplish everything all at once. Expect everything that is good and wonderful, healthy and joyous, but recognize that everything in nature unfolds by degrees. There is a time and a place for everything in your life, and you do not have to push and shove forcing and making excessive demands of yourself or other. There is always more good coming for you tomorrow. Always more good coming for you tomorrow. Develop an expectancy consciousness. Life will give you what you expect of it. Develop an expectancy consciousness. Say, I expect. I am expecting. I am expecting to be healthier today. I'm expecting to be more in tune with prosperity today. I'm expecting to realize friendliness and cooperation and love from those around me, and I expect to express friendliness and cooperation and love to those around me. To just begin to feel the presence of the Spirit within your heart, your mind, and your soul, and just open yourself to the infinite. And as Jesus said so simply, look up and not down. Don't look down to the physical. Don't look to the conditions. Our faith is not dependent. Our faith is not dependent on conditions. Our faith is only dependent on how we believe and accept that the power, the presence, the, the intelligence, and the Spirit of God is being expressed in our life today. So let's keep faith with ourselves, keep faith with God, keep faith with the infinite good, and draw to us all things necessary for us to begin right now, right where we are, to enjoy the good life, the abundant life, and the more wonderful life. Just as Jesus said, these things I have done, you could do them too if you choose to, but greater things than you've done you shall do if you keep the faith. Keep the faith. And so it is. Amen. Once again, I want to thank you for being with me this morning. It's been my great pleasure to have you, and I hope you join me for my next.